Welcome to Curious with Josh Peck. Start the show. This is my podcast. There are many like it, but this one is mine. Is it special? You decide. What's good about it? I don't quite know yet. You've taken a leap. Maybe you're here because you heard me promoting it. Maybe you were just trolling the the Apple Podcast app and you saw my picture and said, well, that, that looks like it could be a mess. I'd like to view that. I'd like to, to hear what kind of hijinks he's up to. I don't know, guys. This is it. This is a new thing. This is fresh. I don't have to be anyone but myself. And this is what I like. I like interesting people. I like people who have had different experiences to mine. And I like the ability in which to have them one-on-one, asking them questions and doing the deep dive to exactly what I'm interested in. So I hope what I find interesting is interesting to you as well. And there may be a celebrity or two on here. There might be some friends of mine. There might be some enemies. Why not? I'm not afraid of confrontation. Um, But inevitably, it's all going to be people who I want to spend an hour with and hear more about their life. So this is John Stamos. You know who he is. Don't act like you don't. I don't know who you think you are. But he's John Stamos. You probably grew up with him. You probably find him handsome. And you probably want to hear about his life and the things that he's interested in. So we made a TV show together two years ago called Grandfathered that got canceled. But what a run it was. 22 episodes of pure bliss and joy. And in this business, you don't really stay friends with people. It's kind of like summer camp relationships. It's incredible while it's happening. And then you say goodbye and see each other in passing 18 months later and just give each other a nod at your local coffee bean. But Stamos and I have stayed friends and I really love the guy. He's good people. We have had a lasting effect on each other's lives and I never would have expected to call him a friend and a confidant, but I can uh, I can say that confidently. So here he is, John Stamos. Test, test. Give me a little more. Testies, one, two, test. Gorgeous. Let me see. Maybe. How's that? Was that better? Yeah, it's great. A boom, 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 boom. Ah, uh, one, two, one, two. So. This is it. This is us. I had a friend who died recently, you know, and it, yeah. it was a really awakening, isn't it? Like out of nowhere. Yeah. But it was a guy who 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 I who was my hero and he was like a you know, he was an ordinary hero and he and I, I just admired him so much, but he but he lost it the last few years. Yeah. So I've just been in the process of trying to remember the good guy. This is no good for a podcast. This is great. Let's start it. This is, is interesting. This, uh, starting? Yeah, we've been starting. What's your, well, I mean, you know, you brought it up. So what do you think about death? I mean, we all think about it. I, I always thought I, I didn't, in a, how would I say this humbly? I think that like I've, I've had an issue with, you know, sort of looking young and feeling sure. young and, you know, when you think you're, you know, invincible and you're going to live forever and. You know, we're not. <laughs> so, I mean, it always sounds right to go like, look, who knows how long we're going to be here. You know, enjoy every minute. Enjoy every day. And But I've really been trying to do that. Right. And how's that going? Good. Yeah? Well, you have to remind yourself all the time, right? I mean, you seem unencumbered. You seem pretty free. Because... And that's when stuff happens, I think. And you, it, it has to be organic. You go, I'm acting free. Where is my, you know, <laughs> where's my, it's my turn. I'm ready now. Yeah, I'm ready. Um, you have to really, and that's when the world sees that, like, okay, he's, you know, he's not trying too hard or doesn't want something so bad, you know. And it, you have to really f- believe it. But it's taken you know, 50, you know, I'm 54. But I couldn't do it if I didn't straighten my life out a few years ago. And you were very instrumental in that. Well, I think we got lucky enough to be in each other's lives at a certain time where we both yeah. were sort of open to, uh, I don't know, my, you know, you're, it's a, 
it's lost on me at this point because we've actually become friends. Sort of what it means that you are who you are and you're the world knows and loves you and you're revered and and I'm unaware of it now because we actually have this shorthand and I have this true love for you. But I do know that like I've got friends who if I bring up a story about my buddy Len or Brian, they couldn't give a shit. But all of a sudden when I'm like, oh, my friend John and I the other day, they sort of lean in. Mm -mm. They're like, ooh, what what were you and John up to? <laughs> so it's but, you know, I've uh... there's a new there's there's just a new clarity for all that for me. It's it. it it's weird. Yeah. Like, I feel like I, I just became famous or something, and it's like, you know. I don't know. I, I, I think you and I talk about this. You know, you get to a place, for me, like, I, I'm super clear and super present now and, you know, sober and all that. And sometimes it, I, it, you feel like you're floating above moments or life or events, weddings, baby, you know. And we talk about that. Like, what, right. what, how, what, what do you say about that now? I mean, I guess it's because we know. We want to be equal. I mean, e even. Mm. Is that what you feel? I think so. I think it's about not reacting to your feelings. Right. And sort of allowing life to have its natural ebb and flow. Right, right, right. And the mere fact that we're not reactionary towards it allows us to have a clear perspective on things. Right. And early on in my life, before I had sort of any spirituality or what have you, I felt like I was constantly in rejoicing, but mostly in dread and fear. <laughs> right. That it was going to end. Yeah. But it's sort of like time, because you, as you get older, you understand it. I know how long a day is, m more, a year. You, know, you remember, like, when you were a kid, it was like, it, it was so long till summer, you know, and then each right. year, you know. Or, I mean, you just, you, you start to understand time better i guess as you get older right and then but you also understand the ups and downs like like where it, the joy is going to come again it's not right. going to be over it may come in a different form it may come and that's where like you and i always sort of practice about about getting jobs and stuff. it's like we're, we're gonna work it's you know right it's gonna come but and then even worse you get the job and then you have to do it yeah right, right, <laughs> like, right. like i love the announcement yeah 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 yeah, <laughs> the, yeah deadline <laughs> Yeah, whenever you're, you know, you've got the new job and you can tell people, I mean, and, you know, it's not to talk shit about my own industry, but right now we're in sort of the dog days of pilot season in early March, and there's some things that are great and a lot of things that aren't great as yeah. in any business. But you know from doing it long enough, and I do too, it's like there's not one job that's going to catapult us to wherever we think we need to be. Yeah. And, and, and where the fuck is that anyway? Like, you know, what is that? I mean, right. It, to me, like... I'm so grateful that I straightened up and I met my wife and I'm having a baby. Not for the obvious reasons, like, you know, oh, you should be a father, you'd be so good. But like another TV show, another announcement, like you just said. Right. Who cares? Right. Do you find that like you saw that before you sort of had this moment of clarity and, and this decision to sort of change the way your life was going, that the 10 years preceding that were sort of a slow build to this sort of tipping point where you just said, all right, I need to switch things up. The way I've been doing it isn't, hasn't been working anymore. It wasn't that clear. And it was also like, you know, I was driving under the influence like a right. fucking idiot. So, you know, it was, it was, it was about like, I would, I would, I would be clear for moments, months, you right. know, then I wouldn't be, you know, it was like just sort of, you know, when you're doing great, you're just like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fuck this up. It's too <laughs> right. easy. You know, my life has been a charmed. I mean, it, it has been a fairy tale, and I don't even know how I got through to this day without, because it's just been perfect. I mean, I've had divorce and death and all the things that people, everybody has that, but you know, so I got to a place where. I just thought everything was going to be great because it was, and I I didn't have the tent poles of most adults' money or thing, you know, and I and I and I thought I was young and and hip, so it, you know, it was. Um, I didn't have to give everything. I didn't have to give a hundred percent to anything. I thought. Right. I go. I'm, I sixty percent is better than all these guys. 50, right. Why do why come on? It takes so much energy to give a hundred percent. Fuck that, you know, and that's how I lived my life for a long time. And clearly, it, it didn't get me to where I wanted to be, you know, or where or where I thought I wanted to be. And that's why, like, like, like this relationship and being clear, I, I went into it like I'm going to give a hundred percent. 
Right. Which I never, I don't think I've done in, you know, 10, 15, 20 years, right? I'm going to give 100%. If it doesn't work out, at least I know how to give 100%. And if it does, look where I am. And it, and it did. And what, what's... Are we really... bouncing around all over the place? No, this is great. I was thinking about death, too. It's like, during that time, it, this, just to bring it back, we started Please. about death, was that I, didn't, I don't know how you felt during those dark years, but I didn't, I didn't want to kill myself. I didn't think of suicide. Mm. But I always said, if I die tomorrow... It's okay. I did everything. I've done everything. Right. You know. Right. I, well, I haven't had a kid, but, you know, that's okay. I'm too old. And, you know, I've, I've you know, it's such bullshit, you know. I had a list when I was a kid. And I made it, you know, and I've scratched off everything on that list. Sure. Well, it's the... Bullshit. It's, yeah, I mean, it's... <laughs> it's, a, it's the selfishness of it all. It's the inherent selfishness of, like, who else am I hurting but me? And Yeah, you don't it, think about that. No, and it's a romanticism of, like... You know, I always projected, I just imagined that life was a certain way and it was hard charging and that it was, it was incumbent on me to wrestle goodness out of life. So I had mm. to go get money and prestige and mm -hmm. romance and just at any cost. And as long as I filled up that, that bottomless pit enough, inevitably, finally, I would be, be delivered. Yeah. You know, I would hit that finish line and something about it would finally correct whatever was going on inside of me. Right. Didn't though, did it? <laughs> it yeah. never does. But it takes so it just takes years and years, and if you're lucky enough to survive it all, then you start to get it. Right. I mean, that's my thing. It's like, you know, that saying was like, "I wish I knew then what I know now." And right. You know, I I really do. I mean, I look at these. You know, I look at myself in my early twenties, and I had the right look and the right thing, but I was stupid. And you see some yeah. of these kids that are smart, that like these younger actors that are like so. I don't know how you were, but. God, they're so more, so much more sophisticated, and they're reading, and they know politics, and they know how to deal with the press. And but I didn't have any of that, you know. Oh, I can't believe it. it seriously? Like when, yeah, sometimes I'll be like, I, I remember looking on the internet the other day, and they're like, Miley Cyrus is twenty four. I was like, what? Right, right. I was like, no, right. It can't be. Yeah, I know, and it's like, well, good for them, and that's why some of these people are superstars, and they're, and they're true to, you know. I just never, I, I always was under the. I think for my dad, and it, for better or worse, it was always like, don't ever let them know who you are. Put on a show. Be a coxman. Sure. Be this guy. Be, a, you know, Dean Martin, blah, blah. Right. You know, and, and don't get real. and don't, you know. So I was always trying to put on something that I thought people wanted to hear a certain, you know what I mean, like attitude or, or like whatever cool yeah, little saying that you heard. And, you, you know, I'm going to do this. I'm not, you know, though that's crap, you know. And then, and then you... But you see some of these people, like Miley Cyrus, for instance. I mean, she is true to who she is. And, and when it first came out, I was like, oh, boy, here comes a Disney train wreck, you know. And she stayed with it, and she didn't back down. And, and now she's, you know, has real respect, and she's super talented and has created a whole place for herself, right? Right. But oh. it's scary. It's fucking scary to, to do that. And I probably didn't even have it, you know, like some of these. Because you look at this new kid, this uh, the kid on uh, – um, Call me by your name. Uh, shop. Oh, Timothy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, gee, where does, where does a guy get like that? Crushing it. I mean, he's the next DiCaprio or something. And DiCaprio at, at that. I wasn't any of that. I remember doing, you know, I just went on the cheesier side of stuff. I remember I was on General Hospital and I was doing, uh, you know, we paid like four or five. I got like 400 bucks an episode or something. <laughs> right. so there was no dough. So the, so, the, so the way to make money was you went out and did these car shows and these sure. things. We've all been there. Right? And right. it's, you know, $10,000 cash. And, you know, yeah. I, I would bring a whole thing of cash like that. And, and I still lived at my dad's house. And I'd come home and he'd say, you know, and he always he was great at keeping me home. He'd say, go out and clean the dog shit back there. I said, fuck you. I, there's 10,000 bucks. You clean the dog shit. You know? <laughs> right. I still cleaned it. But, Solid. Um, but I remember doing one of those car shows and I looked over, the, you know, they would do a me and 12 playmates or me and another actor and it was and the other actor was johnny depp and and he was had holy jeans and this hat and he had he was johnny depp sure. and i was like look at that bum i'm wearing a members only jacket yeah. and I'm, you know <laughs> but very suave right but um but i didn't have that like those younger guy, guys did I did one of those autograph shows, and I was literally sitting next to Lou Ferrigno. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, all right. And he and couldn't I, hear you, though. Well, no. Well, that, that was nice. I mean, it's funny what we have to do. 
I mean, there is, and it's not even, you can't call it the underbelly of these things, but, you know, especially early on, there are these these money grabs that we all do on some level. They're here now, right? Yeah, of course. I mean, I, you know, I podcasts. commercials, podcasts. <laughs> do what you got to do. You do what you got to do. And, you, you, you know, is it is it that place where it's not going to hurt you anymore? You know, it's a different world or does it hurt? You know, I mean, I'm debating whether to go back and do some episodes of Fuller House for the fourth season. Right. And, you know, and you say, well, it, like, it doesn't hurt. We've, it's, you know. Not, maybe it won't help, but it's not going to hurt. Well, who knows? Who yeah. knows if yogurt commercials? I made five million bucks or whatever, but I mean, you know, I go into meetings sometimes. They go, "Hey, yogurt boy!" Totally. Say, Fuck off. And you'll never know. Like I, right. I mean, I remember when I started doing Vine, and that was like it had a moment, whatever it was, and then a sad, sad death. But I remember my agent and manager calling me and saying, "You know, we've." tailored you as this you know you've come off this big nickelodeon show and you were the kid star guy and the funny chubby guy and now you want to be the leading man and i had done some cool independent movies but now you're being kind of a goofy schmuck in your right, car right. and is this the image you want to project and inevitably i felt as though listen i don't know what this is but I know that people like it and I'm affecting hundreds of thousands of people who are watching right. this every day. So I'm going to continue to do that. And also I felt as though, you know, I could easily do a bad horror movie to pay the bills. Right. But this opened sort of a revenue stream working with brands and whatnot that afforded me the opportunity to create my own content and still do it. But inevitably, did that fuck shit up for me in the way that I'm perceived? I don't know. Maybe, probably, a little bit. But yeah, but if you have your eye on the ball and you know where you want to get to or what the kind of work you want to do, you'll get it, and I'll right. get it. I mean, you know, I'm we're just one meeting or audition or offer away from being in Get Out or you know something. The I'm right doing. thing. Right. I remember doing. I was doing a play on Broadway with James Earl Jones, and it was. About as good as it gets. He's the greatest actor probably alive. What was the play? It was called uh, The Best Man. Okay. It was a um, Gore Vidal political, you know, th- three hour. It was long and wordy and an accent. And I was killing it. Right. And during the, you know, once every, I was there for like six months, but every twice a month during that time, I, you know, I was going peddling yogurt, you know, during the day. Right. Didn't matter. I still got on stage with James Earl Jones that night, you know. Yeah, every day. Yeah. What job? <laughs> going back to the, uh, so I don't people forget. want to hear career stuff. Well, I mean, I'm not interested. Mine, maybe yours. But. Well, what I'm interested in is because right. you sort of you mentioned it. Like, what is there a part of you that feels um, like you've had to can project an image and and continue it? Like, how much do you think you talked about? Like, with your growing up and and your dad told you not to sort of show your hand and. Mm-hmm. Do you think that that was inherently you or just becoming famous so fast and having a part of it be your look and the way you were perceived that you just felt the pressure to continue that image for the last three mm-hmm. decades? <laughs> well, it's a, it's, you know, it's a long time, so it, it's a lot of different things. I mean, I, I truly – I look at my nephew who's a really cool kid, not super sophisticated. He's a great drummer, and I was probably like that. I, you know, I didn't grow up in a, in a home – with politics or literature or not to say that it was, but, but it was a whole lot of love that right. I had and it's taking me, you know, time to go back. I, I, I've always had an issue with, with feeling not smart enough and not uh, intelligent, not well read, not up on world, you know, where do you think that started? Well, I had some relationships, you know, I had one in particular where she just said, you're, 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 stupid you're not smart enough for me Oof. and i'll never forget it you know? yeah we and all have it, that yeah so i worked on it i mean I, I you know i i tried to open my mind and learn more and be be you know and i feel much more confident in that area now but it's also like fuck it you know but my point to all that was oh so it was that and it was also there was a time and not too long ago where i felt i had to keep up this guy you know this right. this and you turn on howard you were talking about stern or kimmel or whatever and they talk about this guy that they live vicariously through right S- yeah step brothers was that oh, uh, <laughs> the only guy that they would sleep with right, right. <laughs> yeah all that stuff's weird too yeah trip i mean we could talk about that but but um 
uh, yeah, the the guy that they're the image of and who I, you are. And you know, and I was like, well, I gotta keep, I gotta keep that up because I can't I can't disappoint these people. And it wasn't wasn't just them. You know, in the advent of social media, you get all these guys and things. Oh, you're the cool, you're this. I wish I, you know. And it was all bullshit because you know I I rarely. You know, I wasn't. It wasn't like I had eight thousand women, like people thought, or you know, I was living this life. It was. I was just as fucked up and insecure and and um, uh, lonely as as anybody. Sure. But I felt like I had to keep this guy at whatever cost. And when and, and in keeping that guy up, you push away the great people that could be coming around. You know. Right. I mean, I've seen you take charge of a room, and it's one of your great talents and abilities, and. Sometimes I think when people say like, oh, why can't you just be comfortable sort of fading into right. the periphery and whatnot? And yet that's so, I find like for me, I, it's something that I love cultivating is the ability in which to turn it on when necessary. Right. And I guess it's just, you know, vacillating between the two, finding the moments where you can sort of entertain and take over the room and then also just be a participant. Yeah, but that's different than than having to li be the the Lothario for people or be right. something that people need me to be for them, right. it, it, while sacrificing what I need for me. But the room part, yeah, I mean, you know, I I I have this great shrink, and I don't go enough, but he's sort of a, just an older great guy who says, you know, like if you weren't such an asshole, you know, <laughs> right? But he'd say he, he would say like stop. Stop trying to seduce the world. You, you did that in the you know '90s. You're you're fine. Stop right. it. Just you know sit back. <laughs> but it takes. It's so hard. It's so hard as a human. It's so hard as an actor. I was just doing this this um, this series called You, a Greg Berlanti show, and I mm. decided I want to be like super still. And be, I played this um, this shrink who who was smoking pot, and you know he's just kind of an introspective guy. And I just said, don't move. Don't even just be this you know right and i did it but it was so hard i go you know cut I was like, did i do enough was it okay i was like yeah, yeah, yeah you know yeah but it's just trust look it's just trusting it's trusting yourself but trusting that you're you're enough who you are you know you know you don't have to put on shit for people because people that want something that you're not you don't want them fuck them well I, no it makes sense i mean i walk that weird line of especially if I'll have people come up to me and whatnot, and, and the majority of people that come up to me are from Drake and Josh, and so mm. they're expecting a certain energy and yeah, a certain right, right, right. projection of who they grew up loving. And, right. and I can feel myself when I don't deliver on that. Right. And I feel disappointed, and yet I feel completely within my right to just be nice and respectful and kind of keep on with my day. You are. You always are, and you give yeah. them. I but think that's a different area. They I mean, want it, the shtick. Some people can't. They don't have it. They right. don't have the energy for it. I think I have enough. I think you have enough. You balance And it. I think you learn as time goes by to give them everything they want, but in 15 seconds. Right. That's, I, 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 Clooney was the, is the king of that, right? The hit one and of, run. Yeah. yeah. One of the first times I, I, I knew him a little bit over the years and, you know, I don't know him well, but it's, on. and he'll, you know, I remember what it was, we were in a room of a lot of important people and I was there and, and at the top of his lungs, he goes, ah, here he is, the most handsome man in the room, right? You know, and it was 10 seconds, but I, he walked away and I felt great. And I, was, I thought he was the greatest. Oh, yeah. Like, Didn't and, Obama do that too? Yeah, what? Oh, he's, yeah. Like he, you, I, I think he, you mentioned, because you were there for, at the White House for what, the Greek Independence yeah, Day or something? Yeah, Greek Independence Day. And you, I'm, I'm telling your story, but that he saw you and sort of said, well, there he is. The best looking Greek man yeah, right. in all of America. Right. I'm like, you're gonna piss off Zach Galvin. No, <laughs> yeah, that's sort of it. But 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 I talked to him for a little while. We had a you know conversation. But right. you know, like like a Clooney or something can blast in and bla and it's a but it's okay to it's okay to as long as it's not sacrificing you. It's okay right. to give a little to to your, your the people that you love you, right? Today's podcast is brought to you by Stamps.com. Oh my gosh, Stamps.com, yes. I mean, we can get everything on demand in this world, right? Your television, your movies, your food, but what about postage? Yes, Stamps.com. Buy and print real U.S. postage for any letter or any package, available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I mean, just click it, print it, mail it, why not? You know, I love mailing things. I don't know about you, but I feel like a real feeling of completion. When I've done it, I've got my package, beautiful postage, done, put it in, gone. 
Now you take it, wonderful postage system that just seems to always work. It always works. Bless it. Um, but seriously, I love it. I use it all the time, sending letters, packages, what have you. I do a lot of online ordering and I do a lot of online returning. You can imagine. Anyway, I'm a big fan. I think you should be too. Right now, use Curious for this special offer. A four-week trial includes postage and a digital scale. Don't wait. Go to stamps.com before you do anything else. Click on the radio microphone at the top of the homepage and type in Curious. That's stamps.com. Enter Curious. So going back to what you said about uh, before about this new part that you have and wanting to be still and mm -hmm. so interested, like what? You have the same thing I do. We don't trust our, like, we think we have to do something, you know, with a voice or we have to do a thing or, you know, I'm not well, for critiquing me, you, but I'm me. Like, you're you, so you right. You feel like you got to, and just to sit there. Because also we weren't given like, you know, uh, yeah, I was on Full House or whatever and you're on Drake. I mean, it's not the, no offense, but it's, you know, it's not Shakespeare. Yeah. So you had to do stuff with those, those jokes and those sentences and those storylines where, Great writing, you just can sit and talk. Because people totally. Right? Well, the medium requires you to be bigger than life, just with the four camera aspect. And also, coming from the kid star thing, as a kid, you're so indoctrinated with the idea of over delivering and like right. trying. And I find that now, and still things that I work on in acting class and whatnot, is this whole, whole idea of like, I'm, I don't know who I'm trying to please. Right. And it's probably the dad I never met, <laughs> but like, don't leave me. Or I'm but, right here. <laughs> but it's like, that's it is. I, I find myself, there's a pushing aspect. It's a tension. Right. Because I'm trying to overdo. I'm trying to over deliver. That's what you felt like. I gotta, I gotta be uh, Judy Garland and brr, put on a thing to over deliver. Like, yeah. Yeah. And put on a whole shtick. And you've always said that to me from the beginning of like growing into yourself as a man and, feeling confident in your abilities and yet right. not feeling the need to project a certain image right. of who you used to be. But it's a fine line. It's just a, you gotta, it's just, it, you have to be deft with it, right? Right. It's not as, it's not easy. Especially for us that, 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 you know, created this thing. I look back and go, God, would I, if I knew that Full House at the end of the day was going to be my thing they recognized. You know? Sure. And we are, both of us are beloved by a lot of, most, a lot of people. Yeah. And and sometimes I go, God, I wish I was beloved for something else, something of better, you know. And and if I knew that now, could I have changed it, or at the very least, you know, came up with a better haircut or <laughs> better clothes, or, or whatever, not been you know? three hundred pounds? Oh wait, that's me. Yeah, it's a difficult balance. I yeah. mean, it's funny when people come up to me now at thirty one, and I've lost weight and been this way for 14 years and mm -hmm. people go, wow, you look great. Congrats <laughs> on the weight Thank loss. You. Like it's only been 14 years. I was shocked at your popularity. And, and I don't mean that in a, you know. No, I, of course. I, and you, I mean, you have, you have it. And you know, we'll be out with Bob and Dave and they'll knock them over. Or, or me, they'll <laughs> knock us over to get to you, you know. No, I. It's pretty cool. But then do you go like, well, what do I do with this? And how do, you know. It's that, I think that could be in the back of your mind. Like there. This is my my base, like you know Trump. Right. I got to play to my my base, and right. you know, subcon some way back, you that's where you launch into a little bit of jo Drake and Josh guy, right? Well, they want they you know we did something special because, and I think the correlation between Drake and Josh and Full House was that it was about family, right. like any of the great Norman Lear shows and what mm -hmm. have you of of the last couple of decades. There's like this through line because it's so damn. Um, relatable right. and so and it was funny and and we were going in people's houses once a week and now in reruns at yeah. infinitum so I think when people see us it's a it's a they see us just in a certain way of the way that they grew up with us right and you know I do these college shows now and and I'll talk for an hour and I'll do bits and, and a Q&A and whatnot and what I always try to do is sort of I try to Give direct them a catch line I give them the catch line. You have to. Brother. You got to give the people what they want. Otherwise, they fucking beat me up. But Sorry. No, but it's interesting because I've, I always try to sort of direct around the Drake and Josh of it all. And I'll start with a little bit mm -hmm. and then I'll go to some other places and give them stories about Red Dawn or social media or the whackness or what have you. And then I'll Blackness. go back to a little 
Drake and Josh, and I'll end with a little, because I want to say, I know what you think you want, right. which is one hour of me reciting dialogue from the show. Mm -hmm. Trust me, you don't. Because yeah, right, 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 right. <laughs> I've had those scenarios where I've literally, it's been 20 questions of Drake and Josh in a row, and do this line, do that, and you can feel the audience grow tired of it. Cause... Right, it's it's cheap. But but you're good to, you know, you appreciate those the people. Of course, so good. And but it's and you. again, it's fuck. It goes back to everything. It's just balance. It's like you know because sometimes when you when you let some of that shit go and when you when you don't do what you think they want, right? They want you more. What do you think? Going back to what you were saying about are, this... are people? What do you think people are getting out of? I mean, we're having an interesting conversation. Yeah. I mean, do you think it's are people tuning in and say, well, let's see Jesse and Drake, Josh, you know, talk right. about show business or what do you think? I mean, does it? I, I, then I'm going against what I just said. Was like worrying about what people think, but right. Um, do you think actors are listening to this, or people that you know? I think it'll find. Look, it, it, my world is with actors and creatives, and mm -hmm. it's something that I'm incredibly fascinated with. So I don't think it will be only directed in that way, but I think it will be a big part of what this podcast is. Because it's so, interesting to listen to people that you may have seen on TV or that that are successful doing something you, you may want to do, right. but then just hear the real side of them, right? I think so. And I also knew that with this new sort of thing that I'm trying, it's like I've for so long been worried about appeasing the audience and making mm -hmm. things that they wanted and sometimes with great return and sometimes not yeah. and I figured that whatever this was going to be that for my soul it had to be something that I was deeply interested in and then and hope is that, this it sort of what we're doing yeah because I just want to know I'm just curious I like to know about what's really going on and I feel like most people you'll go and do you've done thousands of interviews and you'll do a thousand and they'll check the boxes and right, right, what was right. it right and you've been on Broadway yeah the problem is you go this. you go right to your pat shit you know yeah it's the you same shit want to hear and you're like eh. and you see it if you even watch it or you read it and you go oh, what am I saying Mel Brooks it's, talked about how you can't it's got to be funny to you right. otherwise you're screwed and so with this I had to take the leap that if I'm interested in this others will be too but you know what? But what what is difficult in these things, and maybe it goes back to my dad saying, like, don't get too personal, don't talk about religion, don't talk about politics. Sure, is that if you don't, you're not that interesting, right? But then if you do spew out some of your, you know, and I just don't have the the um, what's the word I'm looking for? The constitution to to talk about Trump right now. I I don't want to. I don't want the backlash. I don't want Twitter. I you know, same here. And I, I go right down the middle. And sometimes it makes me fucking crazy that I can't, you know, really express my feelings, but I, I know what the backlash is like. I mean, I put a picture of me and Obama up and, you know, you get hate, you know, they're Crushed. calling me. Yeah. And I don't, I don't need it. I don't, it doesn't phase me and every once in a while, and it's rare, and I'm not saying this, but like, I'll see something shitty or bad. It just it doesn't phase me. But it is a fine balance. Again, being interesting is sort of being super honest and sometimes, right. you know. And and I was I came from a place I don't know about you but we weren't supposed to be honest we were supposed to come up come on a talk show and have bits and jokes and things and right that's it you know oh yeah I mean it's interesting sometimes in acting class where we'll be doing certain TV or what have you and 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 my teacher talks a lot about the least common denominator choice and so especially in in the TV medium of things if you do a joke and and maybe the direction is sarcastic or whatever so you hit that rhythm that we've all yeah, heard yeah, before yeah, like yeah. well i guess i'm going to have to do it like this <laughs> and like yeah. and she'll say we're so indoctrinated with bad television over right. the last 40 years that we think that this is what's required right but you know the medium has changed and the things that people are attracted to are the modern families and the fx shows and all these different comedies that are more biting than ever and more truthful than ever mm -hmm. and so yeah i do think sometimes like to your point of the way i'm built would have i'd be thriving in the 70s you know like my type of yeah, comedy yeah it's, for sure yeah because I, Gleason, yeah you know, i love being big, big and sticky and, sticky, and yeah. hammy and yeah. you know it's that's it, the way i like it big and sticky and hammy thank you what do you what's... well there is a world for that somewhere i think at, at places i don't know what's good acting to you it's tricky i can't watch i don't watch any tv shows what? I, and i used to always like oh, i gotta come up with some shows that i watch you know yeah i don't i don't i don't i don't know and, I, and i'm in television my whole life and I, maybe i should maybe I, should. I don't get that i i can't watch tv or movies without 
trying to figure everything out and how they shot that and it was cold that day and he didn't match this and you know right how hard that would be out in the fucking desert and you know i can't ever turn that off and that's terrible because you know but it's hard for you to enjoy it you know it's it, it's it, the, all the stars have to line up it had to line up with what we did you know with the tv shows and then if we get the right part with the right director and the right you know moment in time with a get out or, or or whatever you know right then then you know because you'll see a great fucking actor and i won't name names <laughs> but we something. all know who they are and then you'll see them in something else and they're horrible or right. vice versa you, you know usually you'll see like oh my god yeah we can all fall victim to that yeah but it's and you're finding too like there's a there's a lot of newer, fresh people that that are getting hired all the time because if you're in the right uh, uh, environment, right, the right, right script, the right lighting, the right director, the right editing, right, you know, you could, they could you could be great. I don't know. It's 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 always baffling to me how how to do it. It's I don't I sometimes I think I get it and sometimes I don't at all. I heard Sharon Stone on Marin and. They were talking about her working with Albert Brooks in The Muse. And Marion goes, yeah, you were so funny in that. And she's like, yeah, I'm, I'm funny with when Albert Brooks directs yeah, me. Yeah, right, right. Like with the right director, I'm funny. And like with the right director, I'm, I'm really a great dramatic actress. During one of my dark moments. <laughs> yes. I, this, I just, this just popped into my head because of what you said. And, and, uh, and I had lunch with this guy the other day who fixed me up. He was setting me up on a date with Sharon Stone. Great. And... Uh, and I saw him the other day, and I said, well, yeah. and I was drunk in, in the afternoon. I was having a little day drinking, <laughs> and I didn't just show up. No. She was so bad. Did you and fall it, asleep? I think so, yeah. Probably. But I knew not to get in the car. Smart. And I knew not to show myself. What were you drinking? The what? Mimosas? No. <laughs> vodka, vodka soda. <laughs> um, Warm vodka out of a plastic yeah, it was, bottle. It was, it was during that, you know, that super spinning time when you go like, well, I got a divorce. My dad died so I can act like a fucking, you know. Yeah, of course. But I didn't, but I didn't show and, and, and she's not spoken to me since. She's. And I tried to tell her, I was like, look, I, 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 you didn't, you know. So it's, I don't know what that date would have been like. But. I, I find the stories are best when you've rejected the person. Like I turned down Tom Cruise for ice cream once, and I, I'm glad I didn't say yes. Is ice cream code for a blowjob? No, it's actually <laughs> what, ice what, cream. I've told you this story. I think, tell the tell the folks at home. I uh, I was shooting a movie called Red Dawn that he produced, and so it was two weeks before, and we were working on the script. And Tom Cruise, being the brilliant guy he is, said, you know, this is an action movie. We probably need some moments of levity because it's all, you know, shoot him up and whatnot. And so I pitched this joke and it goes over great. And he gives me the Tom Cruise beaming movie star smile. Mm. He, go he literally guffaws, John. <laughs> and I'm like, I just made Tom Cruise laugh. I'm getting the fuck out of here. Right. <laughs> and so I'm driving back to my, uh, my you know, hotel in Troy, Michigan. And I think, I made Tom Cruise laugh. Mm. I deserve an ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> so I drive to the Dairy Queen. And like any self-respecting <laughs> fat guy, yeah. I'm eating ice cream alone in my car because I don't eat ice cream with people. Is he there? So I'm eating in my car alone, and I see this SUV whip into the parking lot, and I hear, <laughs> and I look out my window, and I roll it down, and it's Tom Cruise. That fucker was following you. Yeah. Seriously? And he looks at me and goes, you can't he's like, eat ice cream alone. He's like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> he's like, are you eating ice cream alone in your car? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, pretty much Tom Cruise. Yeah. And he's like, well, do you want to come inside with me and my family? Like, he had his kids and yeah. his sister. He's like... It was so lovely, and I, yeah. I was like, no, I'm, I'm gonna pass. I'm gonna take Why? a pass. Because you thought you, you can't have two you, ice creams. You, no, <laughs> but did you think you were gonna disappoint him? In, of course, in, it was right, all right. about me. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I've, I've, I've blown a lot of those things. But when I force myself to have ice cream with Tom Cruise, let's call it that, or force sure. myself to go to dinner with you know someone that I'm super intimidated by, right? It's great. I mean, oh, it I on the other side. No, but I mean, it just, and it's that thing. It's like what sort of the theme of this this podcast, I think, is just like not trying so hard. Like, you right. don't have to. You got, you know, I think what happens is if, if they don't have it naturally to go like, here I am, then they make it up. It just gets complicated. I found being clear and confident and not fake confidence, not over, you know, like blown out. I know who I am and it's okay. But you walk into a room like that, 
people just gravitate. You, you see it with me. Right. You see it with you. Like, you just come in and you go, here I am, motherfucker. And we've been in rooms with, you know, Tom Hanks to, to you know, whoever. Oh, yeah. And you go, here I am. It's, right? You, know, this- you have an incredible stable of famous friends. And it's no bullshit, like, because you are beloved. But for me, the time that I was most impressed was when Hanks was in the room. Because it just, I mean, he's, he's the hero. He's the, yeah. He's the goal, the legend. But he is, you know, the greatest like that, right? I mean, right. You, but, Everything I could have asked for. Yeah, yeah. He's he delivers. And yeah. He, but what what's interesting about him, and and there's nothing um, ill intentioned about it. But he'll kill. He's a genius. I mean, he's a right. genius, genius level. And that's the thing that I think ultimately, if I never become a great actor, it's because I'm not as smart as these guys. These guys, you know, you've met guys and gals that are. Great actors. They're so fucking smart. You're right. smart. I've never seen a great, brilliant actor that wasn't in- intelligent. I think that's right. High intelligence. I mean, you're talking about uh, Seth Brothers. Have you ever been around John C. Riley? I mean, that, you know, it's, there's... Brilliant. You got you brilliant. But Tom, what he'll do is, and he has a photographic memory, by the way. He like he'll read a book. But is and, he happy? Yes, <laughs> I can't believe that. <laughs> I mean, I think he is. Just I, add I, that true. to the mix: two Oscars, photographic he, memory. Yeah, but he and he's found a way to say what he wants to say about politics and religion right. and people and stuff. But he'll go to each person and he'll, and this is what you can't get caught up in too much, but. Maybe you felt this. He'll go, hey, Josh, you know, how, how are you? Where are you from? What, what do you do? Mm. Oh, did you ever th-? He, and he'll sort he's of- He's a politician. Get it, but he is genuinely interested and he's learning. He's, he's sucking shit out of your brain. Right. And he'll put it somewhere. And when he's done, when, he's, when, you, when you run out of interesting stuff that he can't, you know, that he, that he can use, if you don't have what he can use, he's on to the, to the next person. The next, you know. Oh, yeah. And I don't mean that in a... In a it, maybe I'm totally full of shit. He could be listening and going like, what is he saying? No, I know what you mean. You know, but... Look, people like that who have come into contact with so many people on a daily basis, right. they have to be careful of their time and how much For time sure. spent. And I totally... Because in that respect, it's it, my experience was totally to what you're saying where I felt like we had that dynamic. But when he left, I felt refreshed and almost like, thank God he's gone so I don't have to continue <laughs> to be interesting because yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's but a I lot mean, of that's, pressure. That's the goal. Uh, uh, you know, none of, you know, we, we probably won't be Tom Hanks, but that's the goal just as a human to encounter someone and when you leave, they're not depleted. They're built up. And not in a phony way and not bullshitty fake compliments stuff, but But do you find like you know, energy wise, right? Well, in my experience, it's always I've had the best experience with the people that are of that that echelon. It the Hanks, yes, the right. Will Smiths, yeah. the the true legends. Because it goes back to confidence. Right. Right. But it's the people I find that when I do run into issues or I don't like someone, I find they're sort of in the middle. They've oh, had a bit of fame, a little success, but they're sort of, they're very yeah, unsure of themselves. Insecurity and it's, a, 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 and a fear of just being who they are. Right. Which again is another theme to this podcast. Exactly. Audible. 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 What is there to say? I'll tell you what, a lot. Why? Because Audible has the largest selection of audiobooks on the planet. Humble brag. And if you love podcasts like me, you're going to love audiobooks. I mean, recently I listened to Hatching Twitter by Nick Bilton on Audible and just loved it. It's the story of Twitter and how it came to be. It's it's like a social network, but sort of Twitterfied. And interesting fact, Twitter originally was a podcast company that failed. And then they built a billion dollar social media empire out of it so if this podcast doesn't work out i you know well there's hope anyway guys this is really exciting audible is offering our listeners a free audiobook with a 30-day trial membership just go to audible.com slash peck that's audible.com slash p-e-c-k and browse the unmatched selection of audio programs download a title free and start listening it's that easy. Go to audible.com slash peck or text peck to 500-500 to get started today. Oh, Josh. What was it called? I love you. I love you. I really do. Look how you changed my life. Look how I, you changed I, mine. How? Uh, podcast time? Are you kidding me? I mean, you know, and that's the thing. You can never take away what you could 
what your value to someone is in the world, even the world. I mean, yours was sort of black and white the way you helped me. But since I have gotten my life together, and it's just abundant in the sense of a wife and a kid coming and the, and, and the way I look at life now, the, how many people have I influenced with that energy? Hopefully a bunch. But from you, it started, you know, I mean, it, you know what I mean? Like you can never, people out there listening, like you never underestimate a smile or a, a handshake or, you know, I don't do it on purpose, but I'll spend more time talking to those guys, you know, out there, you know, the gardener right now or those, those guys we just took a picture of in front of my house, you know. Right. Um, for, I think it was from my dad. He was always good to the, you know, to the bus boys because my dad owned restaurants. And, and, I, and you worked in the restaurant. Yeah. And also, I found for me, I mean, we all grow up with this idea that to be, you know, fame, celebrities and athletes in our society are aristocrats, right? They're the aristocracy. They're, they are the That's kings and queens. That's what people think. Yeah, and we grow up thinking, like, if only I was at a party with these people, if right. only I was accepted by this, you know, level of person, I would be delivered and, mm -hmm. and be the person. But inevitably, I get so much more, and I've only had a taste of it where you've been truly you know, in it for years, but I found that the, the few times that I've had a taste of it, it's, it's been fun and I've been able to accrue some stories to tell my friends, but mm -hmm. it's never the same as me sitting with my childhood friends, chopping it up on a Thursday night right. at a shitty Italian restaurant, right. you know, shooting the shit, hearing about my friend's kids or right. something funny that happened at his trucking company or my other buddy who works for uh, UPS. Like, I love it. I mean, I just love the real shit. I love, and I see this in you too. I love characters. Yeah. I love people with strong personalities. And I find that there are at so many actors who they, they become obsessed because they start stealing. Right. You know, right, little right, aspects. Right. Ooh, I love yeah. the way that guy walks or yeah, that, right, right. that twitch or yeah. that. What do you think? Do, what do you, in, in that area of, of, well, I mean, it kind of goes off, but like I was just thinking about, you know, and you're the king of social media. So like, a, you know, when I started to versus, you know, to where you sort of became, maybe after, you know, when the social media came on, it's like, sure. it's a whole different thing, right? Right. Meaning, like, I think what I thought of this was you were talking about how people perceive us as kings and queens. and uh, Right. But, you know, with the advent of social media and everybody showing pictures of them at the we're home or eating or going to the bathroom. Whatever, so accessible. We're so accessible. But also, I think it's good because I, I think they go like, oh, he's, he's human. He's like right. us, right? Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Uh, I can't tell. I find that I'm like, I, sometimes, and this is just when I decide to read my comments, where I just go, I'm too fucking accessible. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, because yeah. it's yeah, so easy to, true. you know, that is my qualm but with social media. But that's the fine media. line because, again, you want to be interesting. You want to be yourself. But, you know, you have to watch. Well, you, you have to watch you know what to do well that's my sort of qualm with social media is that it's so we're so reactionary be it to the people that are that are interacting mm -hmm. with you to politics i mean right. everyone has a voice and no one has mo a moment to gestate on an idea or to or to right uh, restrain well, you know a you bit know, of restraint there's so much second amendment talk you know right. and 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 you know the li libs they'll go like well the, you know when they Constitution was, you know, it was about a mullet gun. I mean, a mullet. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a gun with a, you know, a, a musket. A musket, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> mullet was you and Oh, yeah. Um, but, you know, the First Amendment, free freedom, there was no Twitter back then either. Right. You know, so sometimes that, I mean, it's too late now. The cat's out of the bag. But there's a lot of opinions out there. And there's a lot of, yeah. you know, too much, I think. Uh, and sometimes I feel like I don't need to throw my hat in it. This, you know? I don't mean to, I, I might be misquoting him, but I think Tom Hanks had a quote about TMZ and those types of guys saying, you know, 15 years ago, we didn't have to talk to you guys. Right. Because like, they'd just be outside right. with a camera and they'd take their picture and go away. But now it's like they want that sound bite. They're, they're willing to sort of agitate you and sort mm -hmm. of get under your skin to get some sort of reaction. And it depends on that. that I think because I, I just got hit at the, uh, the supermarket the thing up there that restaurant they don't they don't taunt me like they taunt alec baldwin because the you know they know his thing you know but i don't like it that i don't think taunt. but yeah that it's up look it's all but this is these are like rich you know yeah rich spoiled people white problems. people You're like who wants to hear this I mean, but <laughs> what was growing up in orange county like fancy you know it was it, 
from what I remember, and 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 I'm I'm very good at archive. Like I I have old pictures and I've digitized everything and old videos and I take a lot of movies and now I realize I got it from my mom because I knew she had a lot of stuff but as she, when she died I've just been cl still clearing her house out of pictures and you know sometimes you g go back and go uh, it wasn't so great mm. but it was it was yeah picturesque. you know my dad was like my dad was you know that you know that moment when everybody you know goes oh my dad's just a man He's not, <laughs> right I never got to that point he wow. was he was always you know a hero you know it was Why? my dad but he was he was just he he you felt safe with them you know and and he was disciplined that's what it was like there's a guy who was disciplined and and when my life went to shit or was on its way that's what i lost discipline you know and you start to you start to push the line a little further, like what you'll do, you know, mm. eh, eh, well, go a sure. further, you know, and pretty soon you're like, oh my God. I mean, I remember I used to, I used to be, you know, I, I didn't even want to masturbate because my grandmother in heaven might be watching or something, you know? Really? Yeah. How long did you hold off? It's till today. Really? Yeah, no. You were talking, <laughs> oh, growing up in Orange County. So it was, a, it was really beautiful. And, and, and that's when I, when I, when I've, when I've fucked up over the years of my life, I'm like, I don't have an excuse. A lot of people, come from a rough, you know, sure. upbringing and one parent or no parent or, you know, schools or bad, you know, no opportunity. I had it all. So if I don't take advantage of all of it, then fuck me, you know. What was it like? Because now we sort of look like, look at Orange County and, and me being from L.A. as right wing, yeah. conservative, white. Again, like Did it I, feel like that growing up? Or that's I, all you knew? I was so, we weren't, I can't, there was, wasn't a lot of politics political talk in the in the house my dad read the paper every morning but it wasn't so i i didn't i didn't know the difference between democrats and republicans but i mean i guess it was a republican um vibe there but it it didn't have an effect on me i guess were you but there is a sense of you know of protection and safety and and i see my sisters doing it with their kids which is great but they're also like, here comes the world, folks, you know? Right. And that's, you know, I'm doing a show on Amazon about that period of, uh, of when I just, uh, went on General Hospital. And I grew up, I lived at home, and I, and I worked at my dad's restaurant, and I wanted to be an actor, and I, you know, I studied. And, Had um, you done school plays or I'd anything done like that? A little, I couldn't sing, and it was always musicals, you know, in school plays. But, right. but I did a little, and... Um, I started, I got an age, but it was, look, the, if I could go, if I could teach my kid anything, it's like, don't put any boundaries or excuses or, and then I never did. I was like, um, how do you become an actor? Get an agent. Okay. I'm going to get an agent. I wasn't like, oh, I can't get an agent because of, you know, right. And my mom, my parents were supportive. But anyway, during that time, you know, I had a couple things going on, but I had this, uh, fearless thing about me, yeah. you know, that, that I, I'm trying to get back every day. And sometimes I have it. Sometimes I don't. But I where, think that's inherent to being a kid, no? Mm, yeah, but I, I, I got a lot of, maybe a lot from my parents, like, you could do anything, go do it. Right. Until the real world comes in and says you can't. But, and I did it. I was like, general, so I was 18. I had, I had slept with one girl, I think. I think it was, it was, I hit a base somewhere, but. Give us a play-by-play. -play. Well, my first <laughs> time was, a, was an older woman. And Me too. It, yeah? Yeah. She Same was, one, do you think? Monica? No. <laughs> she was 35. I was, uh, I was, and I, and I remember thinking, is this what the whole world revolves around? Really? It hurt. You know? <laughs> it hurt. It was, uh, it, you did know. Did she take advantage did, of you? Yes. How did you feel? I just remember feel? her looking at me because I, you know, I had been having sex for so long alone up to that point <laughs> and I couldn't believe that there was another person there to join me. Yeah. Like, what are you doing here? But, um, and I, so I was just, I had that experience and then I auditioned for General Hospital like on a Monday. I shot the first episode Wednesday, and it aired a week later. Wait, now, so you you knew that you booked it within a day? Yeah, I think I got it that day. That it was one audition, and it was supposed to because it was a it was like a five and under. It was like there was a couple sure. of guys on a on a dock, Blackie and his, and the, there was a, two other guys, and one was uh, Brian Robbins played one of the the guys. No and way. Then there was some blonde guy, and I was supposed to. He's done all right for himself. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. He's a good guy. It, it, so I was supposed to get killed or something, and you know, and my mom wrote. But I came onto that show with this, you know, unbridled 
energy and confidence. And I'm, I, I remember one time the camera guys were like, you got to sit still, kid. We can't, you know, we can't follow you. Right. But it was like, I don't know what it was. I'm nominated for an Emmy, right? But the thing is, I was this, it, I was this innocent from getting back to, you know, what was growing up like. It was a fantasy, a fairy tale. Everything was like glossy and shiny and Disney. And then I'm thrown into, first of all, a show that 35, 40 million people watched a day, right? right? And it's, the, it's 81. And there's, you know, there's sex, uh, there's cocaine, there's fame, this weird soap opera fame. The Holy Trinity. The, <laughs> right. <laughs> and it, it was Boogie Nights. It's this kid who's thrown into this world. So that's the TV show that we're doing on Amazon. But, um, and I, I just had all the confidence in the world. And I knew I didn't want to be on a soap opera, as right. popular as it was. I wanted to be on a sitcom. I wanted to be, I loved Happy Days. And I loved, right. Vernon, I loved Gary Marshall shows, you know. That's what I wanted to do. And and I never made more than four or five hundred dollars an episode on that show. And my character exploded. And and when my and I had a two year deal and I said, I'm leaving. And they're like, You can't leave. Yeah, and I'll never forget me. there was a woman named Gloria Monty who was fantastic, who who made that show what it is. And she took me out to La Dome, which was a uh, not not La Dome, um, the Brown Derby. Mm. And it was a thing. And she said, You you're not going to leave, dear. I said, Well, I think I am, Gloria. You'll never work in this town, you know that kind of thing. And I remember going home to my dad saying, "She told me I couldn't do this, and I could, you know." I he love goes, it. Fuck it. Goes, balls. Tell her balls. I don't know where did I have those balls. That's young. I did. Yeah. I, I did some. Sh I mean, I looked at. I think uh, the the president of Paramount after we did a we did a big Drake and Josh Christmas movie, and the president of Paramount wanted to sit down and talk, <laughs> and I said, "Well, I would love to talk." Mm. But I, I don't want to do a theatrical Drake and Josh movie right now. I I just done The Wackness, and I yeah. was sort of really had my mind set in a particular way, and maybe it was a mistake. Um, but, well. you know, and he said, and I said, so I want to save you the time to say if this is just about the Drake and Josh theatrical movie and <laughs> not about... That. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> Were you into a couple of drinks or... No, no, no. I was, right, right. yeah, I was sober. But I, okay. I just said, listen, I'm not here to waste your What'd time. What did he say? And he was like, okay, well, then let's not meet. Mm -hmm. And I think it was a really wasn't disrespectful at all. It was like I think I know what you want, mm -hmm. and that's you, good that you got that. I mean, I, I I had the balls, and then you know, I had a I I had a producer throw me up against the wall. I said, "No, you're going to do this." And I remember again going home to my dad. Like nobody ever talked to me like that. Or, right. And there was another very big executive at the time, and I was ready to go from from Full House. Mm -hmm. And he said, you, no, you're gonna, you're gonna stay and do a couple more. And I said, no, I'm not. No, you are. And it was, wow. You know, it was, yeah. it was that. And um, so, but getting back, to, you see the people that we admire. Probably they're, they're fearless and they stick to who they are. And do you, did you feel the shift? Did you know the moment where the point of no return? Of what? Just you start General Hospital. You're still working at your dad's restaurant, but like you, you weren't gonna be John from Orange County ever again. Yeah, yeah. What what was that I, moment? Well, certainly the you know girls, you know, uh, you know that that's and I, and I and I know everybody hates this to hear people go like, oh, I was the ugly duckling, I was a geek in school, but we I was. All hate that. <laughs> but I was. I don't give a shit. I I mean, I had a. No, I mean, I've got proof. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Why well, do too? I mean, look, I I um I, I was I was picked on at school a lot because I had this attitude like I'm gonna do whatever I want. I had a big nose too. I, I felt when I, I was a kid, this is what I think anyway. I, I was going down some stairs and I and I f fell. I was like three years old and I because I have a scar on my nose and it was as it might as I grew my nose got bulb you know mm. and I got a nose job. Oh, wow, this is the scoop. Here you wow. Go. And we're putting this in the show. I got a nose job after about about a about a year into general hospital i could i was watching maybe maybe less there was a holiday of uh, thanksgiving or something and I had two or three weeks off and i went and my got my nose done like really uh, yeah because i had this big bump you know and i'll never forget i thought i was being you know nobody you know and they're like hey good how was vacation you know but yeah, um, it was good housekeeping I, it was oh yeah i mean <laughs> It was just something that bothered, you know. But anyway, so I, I dealt with that, and I and I was confident, and everybody, you know, kids were f fucking terrible. They were hard, you know, they're harsh, mm. and, and 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 especially just for being what you think you are, or think you want to be. That's I get why kids are getting, you know, so fucked these days. Right. And this guy was, you know, 
this guy, I, this all of a sudden, like it did change, and it was it was before I became famous, but like all of a sudden, girls, you know, wanted, it. and there was this most beautiful girl named uh, Sandra Cobb, and she was she went to a Catholic school or something, but some a friend of mine said, oh, Sandra Cobb wants to go on a date with you, and I was like, oh yeah, you know, so I'm at a part. There was like a couple parties in a neighborhood. I'm at a party and I'm telling everybody, hey, I'm going out with Sandra. I didn't even really talk to her yet. <laughs> I didn't plan anything. But I'm telling her, but I'm going on a date with her. Yeah, Sandra Cobb, name like that? Right? Come on. And her boyfriend, this guy, Ron Kent, and I'm sitting in a car with, with some friend, a friend, a girl, another, but it was, and he knocks on the window and I roll the window down and boom, his fist comes in and plows me right in the fucking eye. Awesome. And I was so humiliated and I was so um embarrassed and i had to go to the school with a black eye and it was and, and 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 this was i was a junior i think and for the rest of that semester and then the next year he wanted to kill me and he would write on the mirror i'm gonna kill you big nose who the fuck is this ron kent well i, I hope he's listening him. and you know and and but at that after school i was like i'm gonna show him i'm gonna do whatever i need to do mm. to be famous and successful just to show this ron kent you know and then it happened, and then I, then I, then it came, and I, and I also remember like, all right, now I got bodyguards. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back and get this guy. You know? <laughs> sure. Right. And of course, I did. Tough guy. And then I go from that to, thank God for Ron Kent because <laughs> it gave me that that thing, you know, to go out and and prove to him and the world that I could, you know. Do you ever have that? Do you ever like? I remember I had a girl I was so in love with. I was like, I'm going to show her. I'm going to play with the Beach Boys, you know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, you know? I mean, I pick up people like that every day. Well, Any casting director that rejects me, I'm like, oh, she'll, I'm gonna, yeah. she'll see, right. you know? But, and, then, but, but then does it motivate you to go do – remember, not casting person, but like – No. I mean, did that ever happen like a girl or I, – I don't know about a girl. I mean, I'm – it's a good thing about me, which I've, I've only come to embrace later in my life, is that – I'm a glutton for punishment in the best ways. Like I right. constantly want the rug pulled out from under me. Do I, you really? Yeah, I like I even I know my limitations and I know that you know you can only do so much change at at a certain time, but for the most part, yeah, I don't like resting on my laurels. I don't like staying in one way. I don't really have a lane where I think, "Oh, this is where I'll succeed and I just know you it." Know. Have I'm you not really you've, you've had moments of that? You're no, that lane. for sure. But I've I love being taken to task and trying new things. And mm -hmm. I, you know, I was working on this scene in, in class the other day and I, uh, and I've gotten to this good rhythm with this teacher who takes no, like, love it. no bullshit. I'm really proud of you. I'm, I'm so inspired by you doing that. I wish I could. Well, I just remember like, and, and I, I got, and, and what I'm What did sure... she say to you? Like, knock that shit. Don't. What do you want oh yeah, she face? just you... she would just she doesn't deal with tension. She doesn't like any tricks, right? And right, you know right. this so well of like anyone who's worked for a long for a while, we all accrue some tricks. tricks Even the greats, I mean, they've yeah, got yeah, a yeah. thing yeah, that they right, do right. that they get known for, right. and she won't stand for that. And Good. and I. I think. And I was winning her I, over the last year. I felt like myself sort of win, win her over and lean on my, you know, the mm. things that come inherently to me and being funny in scenes or silly. And and then the other day I put up a scene and, and I picked it that was just so the opposite of me and her just say, well, that was just tr hot trash. Really? <laughs> yeah. Why? Because you were just doing shtick in it? And... It wasn't shtick. It was that it was it's something that wasn't funny. We're right. a really, really um, damaged guy who was angry and tough and very much very different than me and and I could continue to pick scenes that were more in my wheelhouse but where would I grow what was I going to learn from that good for you but I but it's scary like it's like because you because look we're always you know there's a very few people in this town that are like I'm good I could do anything I want I'm, you know we're all very like, what's next and where you know you know people might think that you and I get offered shit all the time we don't <laughs> right and so we more than you <laughs> well, but I mean, you know, it goes through time, you know, spells yeah, and, 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 and then it comes and you go, well, I got to give them what they want. I got to give, I got to, this is my, sh you know, it's all, it's all so complicated people. So you're going to be a dad. Right. What's that like? I don't know yet. Scared? No. Ready. Ready. I'm Fearless. scared for you. I'm why? scared for all new dads. Scared? Why? Because I'm going to drop the kid? No, because I because or... I project. It's all projection. <laughs> it's all fear for myself. You would be the greatest. I don't know that. Well, I'm I... so selfish. You are. Oh yeah. You'll get to a point where you won't. You'll get sick of yourself. 
That's true. Because I am sick of myself. Like I don't, I don't, I, I, I could. I can't wait to. I have too much to give anyway. It's 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 a. It, I know this sounds like a line, but it's just you know it's a sin to not. I got too much. I was blessed with too much. I got to give. Did you? More. Did you? Before you met your beautiful wife, did you have that moment? Because I I've had that at certain times where we were like, how many fucking dinners can I go to? Right. How many dinners? How many events? How much traveling? Like. It, because it inevitably, even in the heightened version of what the life you've lived, it becomes Groundhog's Day, right? Like Groundhog Day. Like it becomes, like for me, I think how much, like I love being unencumbered because I can come do this and I can go work out when I want and I can right. go. But I also think like how many great workout sessions can I have to where eventually I'm like, I need some uh, some higher 30, calling. What are you, 31? Yeah. I'm, I'm 54. Like, right. I, I, I don't need any more. And I've done everything for right. eight times. So, yeah, for sure. And, and it does feel like, oh, it might be a sacrifice or whatever. But it's also like someone said to me last night, I went to dinner with some a couple of people that I that I was in the rehab with. Nice. And it was great. And, and I brought Caitlin and, and and they said, look at you, man. You know, this is what you were crying about that you missed, you know, because you took a wrong turn. You, you figured it. You did it. Like you went for it, I guess, you know. Right. And. I'm not, but I I made a, a conscious decision that you know this is what I want to have in my life and I and I need to. It wasn't like it, you know. Of course, I, I, you know, madly in love with her, but it wasn't like it, it certainly wasn't. It's not fireworks at this point. It's not, and you have to be like able any to go, relationship. But it was choices. It, right. You know, it it was a choice to to find that person and and and. And go like, hey, the, all the bullshit you think you want in a relationship, you don't want that, asshole. Right. And then when I realized, oh, well, that's what I'm in right now. I'm in something that I, that I didn't know I needed. And then it was a choice to like go for it. Does it make does it making sense? Of course. Like I was like, I'm gonna do it. You know. Yeah, you made a decision to be. And and people go, oh, sure, you're just staying with you. But you know what? I didn't have the pick of the litter. I, I you know I was older and and certainly for many years people would could see a fuzz around me like they, they get close and they go eh okay you know right well not for the right girl at least like you probably had options but it wasn't the right person for you well yeah but like, i mean the right people f split they, yeah they could see it yeah i mean when i wasn't yeah. sober and my you know had my wife met me five years prior yeah no she way. would have been same, running for the same, hills same with me but it's a choices. It's choices. You gotta make good. You make good choices. If I, if you could look at your life, and I won't, but I look at my life or some friend's life, you know, okay, he he got divorced. Okay, that well, he he had, you know, he cheated on her. Like you could just see the, you know, places to do the right thing and do the wrong thing. Right. And and making the right choices in life. Right. Yeah, you allow a good life to be the result of good living. Yeah, but but it's it's. For me, I could make it more black and white. I could go, that choice to get in my car fucked up, that was a bad choice. Right. To to even let myself get to that place it was a bad, you know, it was just a series of bad choices. So, I don't know. I'm, like, I'm so blessed that, that it's, if people could sit back and go, yeah, sure, you're that guy, that guy. But I think it could be simpler than 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 people think. What's the one thing, if you can only impress upon your you know, your kid who's coming, one thing, one single thing, what would it be? Well, I would say respect, but respect yourself with, with a sense of discipline, you know, hold yourself up. Like it's people, there's too many, you know, people are getting away with murder these days and it's because they don't have a, you know, they don't hold themselves accountable for shit, you know? Yeah, I don't know. It's too much, but but I I would hope I would hope that he and and it's taken me a you know and I'm not even there yet, but it's taken me all these years to live who I am. This is who I am. Right. Take it or leave it. That was it. That's John. John Stamos, my friend. John, my man. Um, we recorded that about six weeks before. His wonderful wife gave birth, so they have a kid now, and that's awesome. I love that guy. He's um, he's a special human, and I feel lucky to be his friend. And thanks, John, for for being the first on my podcast. It means a lot. Can't take it back now. People have heard it. That's it. You know what I mean? 
even if we have a falling out, you'll always be the first person on my podcast. So deal with it. Anyway, guys, thank you for listening. Please keep listening. Please subscribe, maybe, if you want, um, on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get podcasts. Okay, bye. Enjoy. What What are you doing now? Are you driving? Nah. Are, you, are you taking a stroll? Having just like a nice reflective moment, walking around, headphones in, just you and your podcast, maybe? That's what I do. Maybe you're working out. I listen to podcasts while I work out. Is that weird? I don't know. We'll talk more about it next time. Thanks, guys.